Alhamdulillah, we have entered in the month of the Hijjah. The month has begun, and today is the second day. The Arafah day is on the ninth, and the Eid is on the tenth. And we see that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a month of blessings, full of blessings, month of maghfirah. And in this month, people do hajj. So therefore, we are seeing the people who are doing hajj, they are heading towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The house which was first built for the mankind, with full of blessing and with guidance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna awwala baytin wudi'a lil nas lilladhi bibakkata mubarakam wa hudan wa hudan lil alameen. That the first house which was built for the mankind in Mecca. There is blessing in that house and there is also guidance in that house lil alameen for the people of universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to do hajj even once in our lifetime. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعْ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا It is a duty upon us. We owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be doing the hajj of Baytullah. مَنْ إِسْتَطَاعْ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا Those of us who can afford it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that Allah is not in need of their hajj. So Allah is not in need of our hajj. But yet it is an obligation upon us that we owe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ and perform your hajj, and perform your umrah lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hajj is a very highly demanding ibadah. <coughs> it is physically demanding. It is financially demanding. It requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of finance. It requires a lot of arrangements here and over there. But yet, we see that when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Hajj, he presented the Hajj in a very simple manner. He replied by saying, Al Hajju Arafah. We know that Hajj is a lifetime journey. So, those of us who, who go to Hajj, we make a plan, you know, one year before, two years before. We make a lot of arrangements. It is a lifetime journey. But when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Hajj, he said, Al Hajj Arafah. He explained the essence of Hajj in one word. As if nothing, if nothing else exists. As if there, there, there aren't other wajibat. <coughs> he simply explains to us that the Hajj is Arafah. And we know that when we talk about Arafah, there is no obligations. What we need to do, we go to the field of Arafah and we stand there. So in terms of obligations, there isn't much. Yes, we go there, we do our daily obligations, Zuhur and Asr prayer, but there is no special requirement, meaning that there is no wajibat. You don't have to do such and such things in Arafat. But in reality, what we see, those of us who have been to Hajj, we see a special mashhad scenario. We see that millions of people in one dress, Millions of people doing nothing but one thing, and that is doing this tifar. That is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. We see that people in groups, we see people individually, we see people standing, walking, sitting. They are doing one thing, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. They know that this is a multiple maghfira. This is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all. So therefore no haji, no hajjajin want to go back home without being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when we go to Hajj, we try our best that when we are in the field of Arafah, that, that we utilize the time, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness with the hope, with the fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us, with the hope that when we return from Hajj, 
we are returning, ma'asum, we are returning with forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that the mountain, the Jabal al-Rahma or Jabal al-Arafa, the mountain of mercy is also placed there. And it's also narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam. When they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Rabbana walamna anfusana wa illam tawfiri lana wa darhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. And this is the dua that we've been taught when we're young. We find this dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran that whenever we do anything wrong, we may not have the ability, we may not have the opportunity, we may not be going to hajj, but we should memorize this dua and we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. When we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. Because we have wronged ourselves, we commit sins. We have shortcomings day in, day out. Every day we are doing wrong things in our life. So we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana walamna anfusana wa illam tawfiri lana wa darhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. We say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana walamna anfusana, we have wronged ourselves. Wa illam tawfiri lana. And oh Allah, if you do not forgive us, وَتَرْحَمْنَا and have mercy upon us, لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ We will be amongst the losers, the khasirin, those who are losers. This was a dua made by Adam salam, And this dua elevated the position of Adam salam. Whereas we know on the contrary, Iblis was cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Iblis made a mistake, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Iblis, Ma mana'aka an tastuda in amartu? What prevented you when I asked you to, to show respect through prostration to Adam alayhi salam? He started reasoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Qala ana khayrun min, khalaqtani min narim wa khalaqtahu min deen. That I am better than him. You created him from the soil and you created me from the fire. So he started using his logical argument, reasoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that his position was better than Adam alayhi salam. When Adam alayhi salam, when he committed the mistake, his response was, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana wa illam tawfir lana wa darhamna lanakunanna min al -khasi. The fundamental difference between Adam alayhi salam and Iblis was the i'tiraf, the admittance, the recognition that Adam alayhi salam realized that it was a mistake, whereas Iblis started <coughs> reasoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the i'tiraf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the i'tiraf in the Quran. That there are people that khalat wa amalan salihan wa akhara sayya. That there are people, I saw Allah wa yatuba alayhi, there are people that, that they mix up good things and bad things in, in, the, in their life. But they always recognize, they always admit, they acknowledge their mistakes. So this is what happens in our life, that we do wrong things and we try to do right things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about certain people that that there are people who admit, who acknowledge their weaknesses, their sins. They mix up. They mix up good deeds and bad deeds, but they, they have the hope and they, they, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through acknowledging, through admitting their mistakes to forgive. So this is what happened, that Adam salam asked for forgiveness and Iblis became arrogant. So therefore we say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-wajim, the cursed one. So it is important that we should always be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. But there are times, there are opportunities, there are occasions that we should be utilizing it. And this is one of those occasions. These 10 days, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said uh, in a hadith that there are no other days on which good deeds are more beloved to Allah than on these 10 days. I the days of the Hijjah. We are in those 10 days. There is another hadith mentioned the same thing that you know, uh, there are no other days uh, there are no other days on which good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than on these 10 days. And then the hadith continues by saying so, so therefore so say in plenty tahleel Takbir and Tahmeed. So when we say Tahmeed, we say La ilaha illallah. When we say Takbir, we say Allah Akbar. When we say Tahmeed, 
we say Alhamdulillah. Okay. So therefore, and also mentioning in other hadith to say, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar. So these are your tahleel, these are your takbir, these are your tahmeed, that we should be celebrating, we should be glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with takbir, with tahleel, with tahmeed, and at the same time also asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness in these 10 days. It is also recommended that we should be doing extra fasting in these 10 days, in particular on the day of Arafat. <coughs> so therefore, it is very important for us to understand and realize and look for opportunities. Because human beings, we are opportunities. And so therefore, we should be looking for good opportunities. This is one of those good opportunities that 10 days is being given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing small deeds, small good deeds through al -Qar, through Psalm, through fasting, through Ibadah, through Sadaqah, <coughs> through prayer, we can elevate our position and inshallah also secure forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the opportunity and also He makes us realize to take advantage of the opportunity and, and engage ourselves in ibadah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لك المعين ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إن الله الغفور الرحيم Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Hamdan Kathiran Tayyiban Mubarakan Fih, Kama Yabbaghi Lijalali Wajhi Wa Adhimi Sultani, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Sayyid Al Mursaleen Al Mabu'udhu Rahmatan Lil Alameen, Sayyidina Nabiyyina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Salim Taslima, Inna Allah Wa Laikatahu Yusalluna Ala Nabi, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu Salatu Wa Alayhi Wa Salimu Taslima, Allahumma Salli Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Muhammad, Kama Salli Ala Ibrahim Wa Ala Alihi Ibrahim Inna Al-Hamid Al-Madid, Allahumma Barik Ala Muhammadin Wa على آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع اللهم أصلح قلوبنا واستر عيوبنا واغفر ذنوبنا وأحسن خاتمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسألك من فضلك العظيم وخيرك العميم يا جواد يا كريم يا جواد يا كريم اللهم أعتنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم أعتنا ولا تحرمنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وزدنا ولا تنقصنا وصلنا ولا تقطعنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وهدنا ويسر الهدى لنا وهدنا ويسر الهدى لنا اللهم آت أنفسنا تقواها اللهم إنا نسألك اللهم إنا نسألك من فضلك العظيم يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ونبيك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما عدد ما أحاط به علمك خط بقلمك وأحساه كتابك ورد اللهم عن ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يقول بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن المحشاء والمنكر والباب يعذبكم العالم من الخروج فاذكروني أذكر المشكور ولا تكفر ولا تكفر Thank <laughs> you.